Ladies and gentlemen, I know I'm a little bit late to the game, but here we are, Careless Whisper, one of two of the most popular, by far, sax riffs that you can play on saxophone. Uh, the other one being Baker Street, so uh, Jerry Rafferty. Okay, now, one of the funny things about this song is that apparently it was originally recorded in a lower key and then moved up to the key that we all play it in. There's a guy, Dan Forshaw. He's got several really good videos talking about this. You guys should check him out. I'm gonna show you ways of playing this if you have a high of sharp key and alternate fingerings that you can use if you do not have a high of sharp key on your saxophone. Okay, so this was originally done on tenor. If you're playing this on alto, then you have basically none of these issues. That little run up is generally what makes this thing challenging because you need an alternate fingering for high of sharp if you don't have one on your saxophone. Okay, so that first note, everything that I've seen, everybody starts that on an F sharp, a written tenor sax, F sharp, up to the F sharp, that's an octave above it. That's the way I'm gonna describe it. I've seen various things of people playing it differently, but okay, so let's take a look at that. The easiest way to do this is to just use your high F sharp key. So you finger your F and then you just add the high F sharp key into that slur. <laughs> The most common fingering for a high F sharp, for those of you who do not have a high F sharp key on your saxophone, is to use the front F with the side B flat. Going from the side B flat to this E makes this really awkward. I don't know anyone that plays it like that. So the first alternate fingering I'm gonna show you is going to be one, three, four. I call this a split F and then add the E flat key. You don't need the E flat key, but it just gives it a little more punch. Another fingering that's very close to that is one, three, four, low C and low B flat. Doing that slur up to that fingering works out quite nicely. This song touches right on the lowest altissimo note that you can play, which is a high F sharp. It's an altissimo note in the fingerings that we choose to use, and it's an altissimo note for those of you who do not have a high F sharp key on your saxophone. I am heavily promoting my book that I finally have out. For those of you who don't know, I finally have my autismal uh, book for tenor. It's up as a digital purchase. I'll post the link in the description. <laughs> Heavily promoting the book. Okay. Before I get to the next fingering, I'm going to show you an alternate fingering 
for palm F or the front F is just like A in the left hand, one and two, and A in the right hand, four and five. In order to go to F sharp, all you do is lift the two key. So you have one, four, and five. Piece of cake, man. If you use this fingering with that run up, you may get something that sounds like this. <laughs> so that fingering doesn't work well doing the run up, but it works really well as a scoop into the F sharp. Some people just decide to completely leave that run off of it. I don't think you should do that, but I've heard people play it a whole bunch of different ways. And I cannot tell you how many times I've been on a gig playing Freebird when someone shouts out, play Freebird. <laughs> okay. But I really like this song, but I don't play it very often. In fact, I only really play it when no one asks for it. And then you bust into it and it's like, oh, I forgot about that one, of course. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you. But I want to take this time to plug the next videos that I have coming up. And I want to do like a whole series of basically finding the altissimo stuff that people struggle with and then give you guys a whole lot of helpful tips on how to negotiate through that. So Baker Street is coming up next. And I'm also going to explore this thing on tenor. I've been looking at this. Uh, this is the uh, Creston Sonata for alto, but playing this thing on tenor requires a whole lot of new brain effort, <laughs> to say the least. I'm also going to explain that whole Kaizen thing that you've been seeing at the beginning of my videos, Japanese two words, Kai and Zen put together. I'll explain all of that stuff and how it applies to making sure that you have an excellent practice routine because we still have a lot of time to practice so when this is all pushed behind us and over and done with you want to be amazing come out and start getting back to it all right ladies and gentlemen that's all i got for you thanks for tuning in see ya